we need to check this out. With the cancellation of NWC, you may not have heard too much about this new Xperia yet, but it's a game changer. We're gonna get into all the specs and everything we know about this new phone today. But first, to all you new subscribers, thank you. I'm super excited about the community of photographers we're building here. And if you're new here, we do simple to understand photography and video tutorials, insights, and reviews. So hit that subscribe button, you won't be sorry. So I have to admit, I've been expecting the camera makers and the smartphone makers to converge their technologies. But the other way around, where the camera makers would be using computational imaging to augment the capabilities of their sensors and enhance the dynamic range or maybe the zoom capabilities. But Sony's gone in the other direction and they're using the Sony Alpha technology to enhance the smartphones. I mean, it makes perfect sense when I think about it and it also explains the naming logic behind this phone the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II, in other words, the second version of the Xperia 1. First of all, let's run through all the upgrades you get from the first Xperia. You get a 4,000 milliamp battery up from 3,300. You get the IPS 6568 water and dust resistance. You get fast and wireless charging. And then you get the newest Snapdragon 865 5G chipset, which is about 25% faster CPU than the first edition. Oh, and for you audiophiles, you get the return of the physical headphone jack. I don't personally notice any quality difference in Bluetooth audio, but some people do, so that might be important to you. You also get eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, and the signature six and a half inch, 21 by nine, cinema wide, 90 megahertz, 4K, 643 pixels per inch, HDR OLED display. Oh, and you can custom set the white balance for viewing on this. Now let's get into the good stuff, the camera. Most importantly, Sony integrated the Sony Alpha camera division into the Sony Xperia development process. And that brings us a host of features that we didn't see before. First of all, you get three 12 megapixel sensors behind Zeiss T-Star coated optics, which have been shown to significantly reduce glares, flares, and reflections. A pretty logical and smart move from Sony considering their long-standing partnership with Zeiss, and I'm, I'm happy about that. The main lens is 24 millimeters f1.7 with OSS, optical image stabilization. There's an ultra wide at 16 millimeters f2.2 and a zoom a 70 millimeter f2.4 lens also with OSS. There's also a 3D ITOF time of flight sensor wedged in between all these for low light autofocus, giving us up to 60 times per second continuous autofocus and auto exposure on the main camera and up to 30 times per second on the other two lenses. The the camera can shoot up to 20 frames per second in burst mode. So with that time of flight sensor, you're getting three calculations per frame every second. It also has real-time eye autofocus and not just for humans, but also for animals. And to maximize these features, we get the Sony Pro Photo app, which kind of mimics the Sony Alpha interface. And a separate Cinema Pro app allows us to connect our phones with our Sony Alpha cameras for touch autofocus and an accurate rendition of white balance, assuming that the phone's screen gets bright enough in daylight to see it. And then there's the Xperia Pro Edition, which is still in development phase, but truly has some pro features. It's got a custom graphene sheath inside with a vapor chamber and an air gap to keep the device and component it's cool. And then the outside casing is made of a low dielectric constant material, giving it that rugged graphite look, which is engineered to allow high-speed millimeter waves to pass through uninterfered at 5G. Four antennas surround the device for maximum connectivity and 360 degree antenna coverage. To take advantage of this, we also get an HDI mini port. So you can connect the phone to any camera, not just a Sony, and use it for video monitoring or for vlogging, for instance. Or you can also stream 4K video to the internet over 5G shortwaves, the faster and more stable version of 5G. We'll also get dual SIM card slots, 512 gigabytes of RAM with an extra slot upgradable to a terabyte. And maybe my favorite little feature is an extra button on the side, which can be programmed for just about anything. I'd probably program it for focus hold. Anyway, the non-pro models are slated to be out late spring and are supposed to be $1,100 US. Since the pro version is still in development, we don't know exactly when that's gonna come out, hopefully later this year. So what do you think, will you get one? I'm personally pretty excited. I mean, I played with the Xperia 1 and it was good, but just not good enough to switch away from the Pixel. But now with the Sony Alpha features and the interface that's integrated, I'm pretty excited. But what about you? Is it enough to make you switch from your current phone? I mean, this is a pretty big leap for camera technology in a smartphone, especially with the connectivity. 
But the fact that Sony is now integrating all their most exciting technologies together between the smartphone and the Sony Alpha and the Sony Bravia, giving us awesome sensors, continuous autofocus, eye autofocus, custom white balance, all on a beautiful display, that's pretty exciting. The real question is, does this mark the beginning of the end for the big cameras? And I would say not quite yet. First of all, the megapixel sensors on the phones, even if they got up to 42 or we've heard over 100 megapixels, the pixels are smaller. So they still can't compete with the dynamic range and capabilities of the larger format cameras. Also, even though these phones now have Zeiss glass in them, which is exciting, it can't reproduce what this lens can capture in the field. Still, the gap is closing and pretty fast. And I just think that this is going to press the camera manufacturers to continue to innovate, which is a good thing for everybody. Okay, if you feel like that helped or was it at least a little bit entertaining, please hit that like button as that really does help. Also, if you're wondering what I think about the Pixel 4, I did a full review and comparison against the a7R 3 in a video. I'll put it in the description below and you can check it out. And I'll keep you updated on any news I get from Sony on the Xperia or Xperia Pro models. So hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to stay in the loop around here. And I'll see you in the next video.